Raven. Rachel McAdams. Killian Murphy. Red Eye. Welcome back to the seventh annual Halloween special. Today we're going to be talking about a film that you might not normally attribute with a Halloween holiday. Some might not even call this a horror movie. On paper, it's certainly an action thriller. But I'm going to talk about why Red Eye is a movie that I don't mind watching around the October season. I saw the movie back in 2005 in theaters. I still have my movie ticket for that. I have most of my tickets saved all the way back to 2001. It's a pretty big scrapbook. It stars Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy, who meet together at an airport because their flight is delayed. And they seem to hit it off, like maybe they could even be in a relationship together. They talk for a while at a bar before going their separate ways, until she discovers that they're actually seated right next to each other. Once the plane takes off, everything seems to be going smoothly until he asks her to make a phone call a very specific phone call. You see, as it turns out, he's got a guy outside of her dad's house who's going to kill her father unless she uses her position of power at a hotel to switch a politician to a different room, because in that room, it'll be a lot easier to kill him. So why do I enjoy watching Red Eye around Halloween? Well, for one, this special has never been about Halloween the holiday movies. If that was all I ever talked about, I'd run out of movies really quick. It just has to be a scary film, a tense film, and Red Eye is certainly that, but this movie's secret weapon is the fact that it was directed by Wes Craven, one of the masters of horror, the man who directed Hills Have Eyes, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. If any other director had made this, it probably would have felt like a straightforward thriller, and it could have been good, but with Wes Craven behind the camera, this is a horror movie. The first act of the film feels almost like a romantic comedy. This couple that meet at this airport and they actually seem to get along really well. They have great chemistry. He charms her, but they go their separate ways because you can tell that she's just not ready for that. And so watching the movie, I know what's going to happen. I know that he's gonna turn on her and he's gonna be the villain. But because of these two actors and their great chemistry, I actually feel kind of bad. Like I was like, oh, you know, they would actually be really good together. It sucks that he's kind of a psychopath. And there's a hint to that early on in line where he tries to shut down this asshole who's ruining everybody's day. Please don't make her do that. She's doing the best she can. I don't think I was talking to you. No, I realize that. Listen, I'm just Please, trying sir. to get... Um, she's the only one standing between us getting out of here at all and total anarchy. Yeah, but she's not the she's one in charge. She's exhausted. She's worked 18 hours straight and she suspects we all hate her just as much as you do. So what do you say we give her a break? Let her get back to a job. I'm guessing there's a lot more thankless than yours. This airline sucks. That shot of his blue eyes is so quick, but it's so important for his character because you know right then and there, oh God, that guy's gonna fucking do something. Shit. And the second act of the film is this tense cat and mouse game on this airplane. And what makes it so fun is that Rachel McAdams is very smart and clever as a hero. She makes choices that in the moment you're like, good, that was good. It also doesn't give you a lot of time to refresh. I was actually talking about this with a writer friend of mine that sometimes in thrillers, they give the hero something to do like every 10 minutes. But in Red Eye, it seems like it's every few minutes she's dealing with another complication. But what makes the movie special is that Killian Murphy is just as smart as she is, and he's able to see through all of her attempts to get out of something. And the writers employed a technique that I'm not even sure if they knew they were doing this, but it is brilliant. Oftentimes with a thriller, especially one that takes place in a contained period of time, you need your characters to not do certain things, otherwise the movie's gonna end. If the wrong person notices that this intense conversation is happening on this plane, the movie is no longer as interesting. So that's hard from a writing perspective, and you can fall into a lot of plot holes, and there are some in this movie. But the reason it works for me is because they decided to give the main villain of the movie the same problem the writers had while approaching this, I'm assuming. How do we keep this girl here without making anyone else notice that this guy is trying to force her 
to allow them to commit this act. The villain has the same problem. He's gotta make sure that nobody sees anything. He's gotta make sure the phones always work. He's gotta make sure that she's in the right place at the right time. So the writer's problems with this screenplay are the villain's problems. It's a fucking brilliant way of solving that issue. You make your villain more interesting that way too, because now he's doing probably what I'm assuming the writers did when they were at page one. How do we make this work? And that's ingenious. Now I do have some issues with the movie and a lot of it has to do with some unnecessary humor. The movie gets rather cutesy at times. Really weird that it does too. There's over-exaggerated acting sometimes. Like there's this couple early on that are so horrible to this clerk and they have a back and forth and it becomes a bit of a little subplot with this clerk. And I just, I don't find it necessary to the film at all, but at 85 minutes, it's already pretty short. So you can't cut too much else out. Or like when Rachel McAdams is walking onto the plane and this one guy sees her and thinks she's really gorgeous. And so he's got to make himself look as handsome as possible. Little moments like that are just completely unnecessary and they feel exaggerated and larger than life. Whereas a lot of the movie feels more tense and a little more realistic, even though it does ask you to accept certain things in the hopes that you'll be invested in this thriller. Our ceiling exploded. I got chunks of plaster all over me. I could get asthma. Moments like that really don't work for me and they actually make the film a lot less tense than it could be. But the third act, as soon as she is free and she's running around and he's following her and they're trapped in this house and he's got a knife, this is a fucking slasher movie. Wes Craven uses all of his tricks now. And so like I said, on paper, it's an action thriller, but to me, Red Eye has always been a horror thriller. As a late period Wes Craven movie, Red Eye is one of my favorites of his. I don't think it's great. I just think it's a really fun thriller. I'm gonna give Red Eye a B. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching, but I do want to tell you about something pretty cool. A buddy of mine named Robin Block recently executive produced a documentary called In Search of Darkness. It's all about 1980s horror, which I love, and I know a lot of you do too. This is a really epic and sprawling documentary, and I was actually really inspired by how he did it because he kickstarted it and he got some really good numbers doing it. It actually made me think a little bit about things and how I might achieve some of my dreams filmmaking wise, because kickstarting to me was always kind of a negative, but the way they did it was really, really smart. I would highly recommend checking out this documentary. It's very entertaining and it's very insightful and nostalgic for 80s horror fans. It's currently going to be on sale at 80shorrordoc.com from now all the way until midnight on Halloween, then you can't get it anymore. They were kind enough to give me an affiliate link. That's in the description below. So if you do decide to buy it, please do use my link. It helps out the channel. And congratulations to them for making a really awesome documentary. I hope you guys enjoy it. Look forward to more reviews very soon. I got a lot coming for you guys in the seventh annual Halloween special. Thanks as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck manized. <laughs>